call the February 9th meeting of the West Country Utility Commission to order. And the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the January 12th meeting. Everybody received it in the packet. Ms. Garrett, I make a motion we approve the uh, January 12th. I uh, have a motion from Mr. Holmes. Second. Second from Mr. Brown. Any additions or deletions? All in favor? Uh, All opposed? Minutes are approved. January safety report. Good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, our numbers. We're 249 days without lost time entry, <coughs> and 238 since our last horrible injury, and we got new days of the year. Um, we always start January out with our winter weather policy, and we begin to think, way January was going, how warm it was, it might not be needed, but it rolled on the end of the month. In this policy, we talk about uh, prevention of slips on snow and ice and preventing motor vehicle accidents. And one of the main things we do is restrict travel except for necessary exposure out on these walking and, and roadway surfaces once we get precipitation down. If we do have to get out and do some work, we have ice, ice scratching devices that slip over <coughs> your shoes that, that help with your footing. And then if we or out riding around, getting from place to place, try to use our four-wheel drive vehicles or put uh, ice chains on them. And I can say we didn't have any incidents through the ice last week, so we did get good there. That's all I've got for my regular safety report. I do have an additional thing Todd asked me to uh, include. We did sustain some damage to some utility property. Um, on the 14th of January, one of our fleet vehicles, Unit 32, was parked at the employee's house in the driveway and a, a motor vehicle coming down the road, veered off the road and ran up and struck our vehicle and his vehicle. And they exited the scene, police didn't find anybody there, found the vehicle idling and there was no insurance recorded for that vehicle that caused the damage. Our insurance company uh, caught a total loss on our, our fleet vehicle. <coughs> got a couple of pictures here. You can see, uh, I don't want to mess up here. Our vehicle, the vehicle that came off the road, and then the employee's vehicle also got struck. And that's what damage ensued. I looked at that real close and thought to me the only thing to do is tires. So I don't know what else to say. We were not at fault. We were just sitting up in the driveway and, and, and had a tough vehicle to go about. But I wanted you to be aware of kind of what happened in this scenario because it did totally do the problem. One of the things you want to do. Yes, that is true. I'm glad we did not have an employee in a vehicle taking that kind of damage. Anybody got any questions? So, on one of the purchases on the agenda, Yes, that's actually why I asked him to add it in there, was so that because it was not originally budgeted, so it is one of the replacements. <laughs> okay, thank you. And I think going through all the weather we had, that we didn't have any personnel injured and stuff. I didn't go out my house for two days. <clears throat> When, uh, and I, again, commenting on that, because that's exactly what I was thinking. I mean, we had uh, issues, the the a.m. that started, so we had linemen out in the middle of that at 1 a.m. in the morning working, and has had pretty much the major outages uh, that we had 
received back on by 6.30 that morning. And then we're continuing to have spot outages throughout the day and then the next day. So they were, I can tell you, our linemen, and we, believe it or not, we had some water breaks. So our water guys were also out in the elements traveling around. And it's always good to get through those with no major injuries or even a recordable. So, you know, one of those things I think just for them, taking that the safety that they need to do walking around and one thing I them. noticed an event like we had shows the benefit of a tree trimming program. It does. Or Major. We would have had a mess because there were some big limbs yeah. and big trees that went down. All right. <clears throat> Personnel update. All right. We have the opening or normal openings, no uh, new hires, no resignations for the uh, <coughs> January. Uh, just following up, one of the things I talked to Brett about this and this something we put together for this year and just uh, to emphasize, I hope in the next few months you'll be seeing a presentation from uh, the new GM uh, the, with an adjustment to the water we are putting together, Red School start putting together a skills level so where that the employees can transition up based on skills, but then also have the incentive that if you get your licensing, you may get more money uh, so that we can maybe address this issue here a little bit for those guys also that have the skills and able to do the jobs but are still having issues with passing those tests. Because uh, I, I, we've got some good guys that are able to do the work, just are not. But I think there still needs to be an incentive there to get your license of some type because you do not want to get back in a situation like we were when I first got hired. We had one person with a license. And you do not want to put yourself where you only have one person with a license working for the organization because the state, a city this large, needs more than just one. And that's what they had originally came to us about. Was and that's when at that time they, I actually was asked to get my license. Michael Lamb and Jerry Johnson, we were all started carpooling and getting our life water license. At that time, <laughs> thank you. Talking 2003. So. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Next item <clears throat> is money spending part. Yes. All right. We can go through these one at a time. Uh, the very first one on the list is actually is the uh, a used vehicle we found. It's actually the exact same model as the vehicle that got wrecked. Uh, it's just three years newer, and it had 50,000 miles less on it. Uh, we found, we, we help me, Danielle, if I'm correct in this, we received $16,800 from the municipal league, and you can see we are purchasing this one for $22,400, okay? So we're getting a vehicle that's three years newer with uh, 50,000 less miles. The benefit of getting a vehicle that is the same model, there actually was some things on there. On the back of that truck is a bumper that is a $7,000 bumper that actually has a hoist system in it that we will be able to mount directly back on that truck. If we would have got any other truck, it would have not uh, been able to be put on the truck. We would have had to buy it. And actually what it is, is it's there so that if they have to pull a pump, they're able to pull that hoist system out and use it right off the bumper. And then just some other odd things, the toolbox, the toolboxes that are in the back fit in the back, and also the uh, running bars that are on the side, we were able to take off the sides and be able to put them on just some of those 
accessories and save that money. So the difference in the cost, you're talking $6,000 roughly. You know, if that vehicle lasts two years, I mean, that's $3,000 a year. You can't beat that. <laughs> so it gets us to that next step. This was a vehicle, again, it was not <laughs> to be replaced, but was able to do that. And according to the, my understanding is when it's a used vehicle, we don't have to bid it out if it has more than 5,000 miles. So we were able to be able to just purchase this. Well, the way truck prices are, I'm surprised you found one for that. Yeah, I agree. It's also under 35, right? Say again. The price is under 35,000. Yeah, that's the bid. Oh, even yeah, yeah. Sorry about Okay, any further questions? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Burns, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Uh, All opposed? Motion passes to buy the GMC 2018 pickup. All right. Next item. Uh, the next one is a vehicle. Again, this the, the next two are actually in our budget to replace. Uh, the first one is replacing of the other vehicle that was in this exact department, but it was lauded as being to an age that needed to be replaced. We were able to find, and what the vehicles we're kind of looking for these guys is we don't want crew cab. We don't they don't need to be able to seat four people in their supervisor or something like that and four-wheel drive. We've figured out with some of the ice that we've been getting that maybe having four-wheel drive is not a bad thing or all-wheel drive uh, on these trucks where previously we, you know, we were like, oh, well, you're just going to the pump station. You can get to all of them on the street, except in some of these weather events that we're finding to be an issue. So we found this used vehicle that was one year old and uh, it had 8,000 miles on it. And again, based on my understanding is that because of it uh, having more than the 5,000 miles and being used, we did not need to bid it. Bid it. So we were asking to uh, for 36,000, basically a 2022 with 8,000 miles. It's still a very good price. Did you say thirty-five thousand? Thirty-five thousand, but what he's talking about about a used vehicle not having over five thousand. So if it has over five thousand miles, I have to look at that. But I mean, I assume you. Look yeah, at that. Kenneth Johnson is. Okay, who, well, Kenneth is in charge of purchasing. He probably knows when it comes down to that. Because I didn't know that until he told me that one. <laughs> yeah. Normally, if it's over thirty-five thousand must be bid out unless it's waived by ordinance of the city council. And in this situation, it, it probably may be an exception based upon what Kenneth is saying. I'll check into it as well. The only exception is it cannot be leased to the city uh, and have over 5,000 miles. You couldn't buy that vehicle. Correct. No, it's a straight purchase. Because my, and the only reason I know this is that my understanding is they just did this with a fire pickup truck. Yeah, the rule was just changed. Um, okay. With league and state and all that, they just changed last year. Oh, well, they. So I, I had never heard it before. I'm like, I've never heard that before. And Kim's like, no, we just did it with the fire department, and then he says it's legal. Okay. Okay. Do I have a motion? So moved. <clears throat> Mr. Felton, have a second. Ms. Brown, all in favor? <coughs> all opposed? That's to buy the Ford pickup for $36,129. All right, and the last one is uh, basically adding another travel vehicle, the Ford Force that we use all the time is getting into its years. This is a brand new vehicle that is meeting state bid qualifications. They actually brought that came in and met the state bid price. So this is a 2023 brand new, I think it had five miles on it. Uh, Traverse, it's white. Uh, so I'm asking y'all to approve this based on that they're meeting state bid 
Yeah. Yeah. So you got greater knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can tell you that 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 band is open as a secondary without causing kind of a gray area. I agree. I agree. I, 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 I don't disagree. With that. I can tell you there. Ward and Warren and others were already looking at potentially some potential grant opportunities out there where you potentially we can be taking fiber to every home and plugging fiber directly into every meter. And when you do fiber to every meter, then you have fiber to every home also. Well, if you have some <coughs> That's right. That's correct. I agree. But again, it, these are they're reading every hour, and it says hey, the the system actually sits there and says, "Hey, we haven't talked to this meter, and after so many tries, you need to go see what's going on." Uh, I know those that pilot project they've been working on. We've actually been doing the remote uh, connects and disconnects on those meters already. So everything seems to be working really well. We've still had our meter readers going out there manually reading them and then we are verifying them based on what we're seeing in, in house. So it's, uh, it's I think long term it will be very beneficial for the city of West Memphis. <coughs> Anything else? I would just like before we adjourn to thank Todd for everything he has done for the utilities in the city of West There's no way I wish I had a flag or something but a dots. But it's just a heartfelt thank you. Thank you. And great wishes that um, future endeavor. Thank you again. I, I'm not dying. <laughs> so, thank goodness. Well, I, I say that, you know, only God knows. <laughs> but I call you or are you charging us? No, I am not. <laughs> no, I am not. Somebody cute said, you're going to start. And I said, no, I'm not. West Memphis has done too much for me. No, I, I, again, I am ingrained and helpful. I mean, I, had, I was having discussions with a ex-senator yesterday about things going on in West Memphis. I am here to help. I want, you know, again, we had a site visit yesterday and I was there pitching West Memphis. It's okay. I, I wish West Memphis all the best in Greenland County. My kids are going to still live here. <laughs> so, <laughs> my kids are... Well, that's why you're here. <laughs> we do appreciate everything you've done for I was going to say to Mr. Chairman, I second your motion. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he'll be he'll be like an attorney when he picks up the phone and the clock starts ticking. Yeah, we're going to be able. Anybody have anything else? No, it's just because we can. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.